good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the leaders meeting at our virtual global accent USA 2021. Our new normal, new, new semi normal. Um, Andrew's kind of filling in for um, Harold this evening. Um, so he had an unexpected something come up. So, what we were going to do is we're just going to present um, just like a brief um, slide presentation, you know, pretty just some information to, um, for everybody and then open it up for questions because we just wanted to have more, make this more of a co conversation communication uh, hour for everybody to ask questions or, you know, ask uh, for information or whatever they need um, from us. So, so the first, uh, the agenda where we're gonna go over the policy repository on um, our website the new OWASP committees and uh, projects, the shared services that the foundation has offered, and then open it up for Q&A. So OWASP um, policies, we um, consolidated the OWASP policies into um, one location that's reviewed and updated. And it's on the website under the about and if you, the drop down arrow will come down, I'll say policies, but a large majority of the policies have been um, updated and renewed. And these are just some of the ones that I know that chapters and projects will be using or are using frequently. So we just wanted to point them out that, the, that they're listed and they've been updated. And um, Andrew's very good about keeping them up to date and reviewing them. I think, I did do you talk about the expense policy in any detail, Lisa? I did. I did not. Okay. Um, I was going to leave that to um, question and answer. Mm -hmm. and we can so, expand upon that. Yeah. So uh, for the attendees, please ask us about the expense policy in the Q&A section. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... I'm in charge of the chapter committee, which meets monthly, the first Tuesday of the month, uh, between one and two Eastern time. And they have an address and they also have a website. Um, Sam's the chair and he created the website. It has a lot of information for leaders. He's, um, he's been around for a long time and he has a lot of um, helpful in, information on there and resources. Avi uh, just got uh, voted to the board. So his seat will be vacant as of January 1st, and Haral is the secretary. Um, and there's other members that just come to the meeting and participate, which everybody is welcome to come and, you know, listen and talk and share ideas during that meeting. Um, some of the initiatives that they're working on is the regional chapter model and the chapter handbook, which is gonna be now a guidance handbook for leaders. Um, the chapter policy replaced the handbook with the uh, criteria and the requirements for um, active OWASP chapters. Cool. Mm -hmm. And this was Harold. Okay, so I'll, I do attend a fair number of the project committees mm -hmm. uh, meetings. Uh, they meet at the, pretty much the <laughs> last, but generally the fourth Tuesday of every month. Again, they have their own email address and um, homepage. Um, they are currently looking at vendor neutrality best practices. Uh, there is a draft document out and about at the moment. Um, the reality is uh, OWASP has a very long history of vendor neutrality, meaning every vendor has the same access, the same opportunity. Uh, it does not mean no vendors. We do have a segment of our community that are against any vendors but that is not realistic. And realistically, the best way to avoid a lot of conflict is just simply to accept the fact that as long as every vendor has the same opportunity, that's where we need to land. The project committee is actually looking at this from the point of view of projects. So if you want to be involved in that, please join the project um, committee. Uh, they're also working on a contributor agreement, which is essentially to make sure that the code that you submit or the text you submit, um, as a contributor, or author, or uh, as a project lead, you are actually legally entitled to give to us. Um, it's, I don't think it's much more than that. It's literally just making sure that 
we're not going to get copyright strikes or take down notices or anything like that. They're also working on the project handbook, which like the chapter handbook and the uh, events in a box is a set of really good guidance for well-run projects. So if you um, know some stuff about running projects and want to get involved, please look at the project handbook. And uh, I think it could be safely said, pull requests, gratefully accepted. Um, they have recently been working on project reviews, graduation and onboarding um, processes. And so the project promotion process has got going again. And I believe they've got through the, uh, the backlog so far. So if you are interested in going from uh, a lab to incubate, uh, sorry, the other way around, um, or from one of the lower levels to a flagship, please work with the project committee to understand what it is you need to do to get to that, that desired status. Um, so Harold, I've asked Harold to look into the return of the project summit. Uh, he will be gathering project leader expectations as to what is the best way. Uh, is it best to attach it to a AppSec Global? Is it best to have a separate project summit? Um, we just don't know. We want to get your feedback on that. Secondly, I, they're looking at identifying projects that wish to be um, recipients of grants or they want to go and do fundraising and then work on something. So if you're a project leader and you want to get a grant or you are prepared to actually do some fundraising to allow yourself to work on the project, please contact Harold. Um, we're also doing marketing. Um, there's an effort behind the scenes to improve the OWASP Foundation's marketing. And a key element of that is actually project visibility. We have lots of projects, but not all of them get a, a share of the limelight. And we've got some real hidden gems. So the, the main goal for us here is to, uh, you know, if you're interested, you can get into the project spotlight series that um, Bandana is running. But if you don't, you want to get some marketing out there for your project, please contact us. There's also heaps of dead projects, projects that have not been worked on for some time uh, that may have vulnerabilities or are current best practice. Um, in the similar way that we went through this process with chapters, the goal is not to kill every single project that has not been had a, a commit. I mean, that would kill the OS top 10 every, you know, in the last year before its release, because we don't change anything really for the in the last year. But what we want is more activity and more active and vibrant projects. And maybe we can get you some more com um, community to help. So don't think of it about it as a cleanup as it is a reactivation. Uh, so if you are running a, um, a project uh, or have your eyes on one that hasn't been touched in a very long time um, and you feel like you could actually help, please talk to us. We would prefer to have 300 great projects than 100 um, active projects and 200 dead ones. So Lisa. So some of the other um, OWASP committees um, that we have going on that I'm sure would love um, some more volunteers to participate. We have the education and training. We have the outreach committee. We have WIA and diversity and inclusion and compliance committee. And they can all be found on the OWASP website. Again, at the top of the um, website page, you'll see the logo on the left. And across the top, there's um, chap the word chapter projects and about, if you click on the about, you'll get a menu and you'll see committees listed there in that menu. One of the ones that I'll highlight here is the education and training committee are actually actively working on a tertiary and industry curriculum. Um, and so if you want to learn about that uh, and help, um, they're very, very interested. And obviously once that's done, there's some scope to work on certification. We're not there yet. And in fact, it's early days for the curriculum. Uh, Adrian Winkles is talking at this conference. If you've had a chance to watch his talk, uh, I think it'd be incredibly valuable uh, if you can help contribute to that. Oh, one last one. The Compliance Committee is looking for new Compliance Committee members. Uh, at the moment, we've only got one Compliance Committee member, uh, Fiona. It's not currently a very onerous duty. Uh, but it's an important one and we must have one for whistleblowing and other activities. So uh, if you are interested in um, 
understanding more about our bylaws and the uh, complaints uh, procedures and actually help make our community less toxic, please uh, reach out to Fiona Collins or myself and I'll get you in contact with Fiona. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Um, so here are some of the shared services that the OWASP Foundation provides to all chapters, projects, and committees. We have a Meetup Pro account, which has an API um, attached to it to help connect the OWASP website to the Meetup so it'll mirror the, the meetings that are posted on that um, to the OWASP webpage so that leaders don't have to manually you know, populate that. So um, less data entry. And they also have a new COVID safety measure under the manage, uh, manager group button, which if you click on that and you start when you're setting up your meeting, if you're once hopefully we ever go in person again it has a lot of um cool features in there like you know if you require you know vaccinations and masks and um that you're going to be taking temperatures and stuff like that so it's a really cool feature that they uh they added with um with this uh covid you know virus going around um the other thing is if you're using the OWASP Meetup Pro account, you, your meetings will be discoverable. And we have um, created a 30-day preview of all the meetups of, that are going on around the world in our chapters. And those will be listed um, on the OWASP website. So you'll see like a, if you click on it, you'll see a 30-day view of all meetings that you can go to literally around the world. So that's pretty cool. Um, we offer a Zoom shared account and then the, the Google Workspace accounts. We have our Slack community, which you can access right on our OWASP website. There's a little box in there um, on the about page. We have the, um, the Amplify Slack channel, which um, we will help promote um, other, on the found OWASP Foundation, um, Twitter account, you send your tweet or post to the um, Slack channel of hashtag, hashtag Amplify. We will uh, repost that for you. And then hopefully soon, we're gonna be rolling out StreamYard um, services to um, the chapters that's uh, in the works right now. Yeah. And you can get all these shared services through the contact us uh, service request ticketing which um, that will be changing soon, shortly too, that it'll be more user-friendly or we're gonna separate out, you know, chapter and chapter leaders request tickets and then members and we're gonna, it's gonna be more um, customer focused and customer friendly coming soon. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. Um, I'm actually in the process, um, Harold has been negotiating with StreamYard Mm -hmm. And he has also been looking at some alternative services, but we are very close to signing an agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, and once that happens, we've got some technical stuff in the background that we need to work on. Uh, but it is our goal to get StreamYard into the hands of chapter leaders and others who need it um, uh, within the next, well, hopefully before the end of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'll just uh, re um, restate. If you raise your hand, um, there's a little um, raise hand button that should be on the bottom of your screen. Uh, click that and we will get to your questions in order. Um, you'll be promoted into the video and your audio will become uh, visible. I think you can stop sharing the slides too and I think we'll see everybody. Yep, we can do that. Possible. <laughs> um. Oh no. Okay, the other way you can do it is you can just type things into the chat. Oh, we've got two people. So Kevin, um, Kevin Wall, can we have Kevin come up? You just had to unmute yourself, Kevin. I think you can now. There he is. Hi. Things that I've been asking for, um, and this actually is kind of related to the talk that I'm giving. I mean, because I discuss it as one of the things that was bad about the whole East Happy experience was 
that it's really hard to find help in a specific niche area um, amongst the OWASP leaders. And I'll give you like examples. I had one we first went from Google Code to, and, and which used SVN to Git and GitHub, right? That was a big transition for me. And I'm like, didn't know how to do stuff. And pretty much everybody who knew kind of just left, <laughs> right? So that transition just worked terribly. The other thing was like, we went also from Ant, which I knew very well, to Maven, right? Another big transition. I tried to reach out to people. How do you do releases, you know, in Maven? Because like all the stuff that it was supposed to work with the Palm, it wasn't working. And it took like years and years to just figure out. And finally, Dave Wickers figured it out for anti Sammy because he took over that for our Sean. And, um, you know, he was able to manage it. And I think one of the things I would love to see is a place where people can just volunteer to say, you know, I consider myself knowledgeable about this and I'm willing to help other projects with it. You know, so like, for instance, if somebody needed help with cryptography, I would be willing to help with that, right? Because I've had a lot of experience with uh, Apple, you know, applied cryptography. Um, but like at the time, I didn't know anything about Maven. I didn't know anything about Git. I didn't know anything about like how to do releases to Maven Central. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I've and I've been asking or bringing this up like for three three years and it's like it's never gone anywhere i mean it's like nobody said no but it's just like i don't know how to start that is that like something that you do with a committee or i mean it seems to me it's like you just put a sign up you know page on somewhere on the OWASP site and get people to so add their actually, names we actually do have a speakers bureau that we set up as just a very simple csv file under the chapter committee i think a very similar way of approaching this would be to do a similar thing under the project committee. Um, so uh, let me take that to the project committee. I think that's a really good idea. But also we are in the process of, a, you know, now that we've actually standardized what a student chapter is, we've got a number of new student chapters. Maybe it's really worthwhile to um, have outreach from each project who's interested in this stuff saying, I need a graduate student or I need an undergrad who's interested in X, Y, Z. Um, can you? That would be awesome. That, that would be yeah. awesome too. Cause I mean, I mean, we definitely, we have three people that try to keep ESAPI chugging along and, and, you know, and it's like, I don't know if you knew, I'm not trying to complain, but like my son got hit by a car mm. back in, in, in September. And that's kind of like been my full-time focus trying to get him, you know, well, hmm. and so. So the other one that I'd actually say is if it's something that uh, you're deeply passionate about, project leaders, we are looking at grants. And so what you would like to do is say, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I think if I could get X amount of funding for this, I could work on this full time. And this is the result. So that's under the grants policy. Um, please work with Harold because we definitely need a list that we can shop around when we do fundraising with our corporate members and others. Um, we don't have any list at the moment to say Zappi is looking for a three-month sabbatical and it could be funded for this amount of money. Okay. okay. Um, I don't so see any other hands. That's, that's all I had, so I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are there other questions? Because otherwise I'm going to talk about expenses. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I saw one very briefly. Um, yeah, okay. OWASP Foundation. Is that you? Who's the OWASP Foundation? Well, it's normally Dawn. Yeah. Is that, is it Dawn? Don't know yet. I just raised my hand because no one did to see if it was working. Because oh. when you were saying no one was doing it. Yep. That, so I, I raised my hand to make sure it was working. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Dawn, do you have any questions for us? Or do you, shall we talk about I was about just it? thinking of what 
they said before about students and stuff. Since Lisa's opened so many student chapters, you can actually email the chapter on Meetup and see if it gets any response till you get the list together. If they wanted to reach out, you know, mm -hmm. since they're all on the Meetup page. Yeah. On the dashboard, you can look up student chapters and reach out that way till you get the list through. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so that actually, Dawn is the person who actually helps um, chapter and project leads with uh, access to merchandise. Um, Dawn, do you want to just describe what your plans are for getting some new designs? Yeah, I really, uh, since we have the 20th anniversary, we'll keep up till the end of the year. Uh, we have some, you know, the standard logos on a lot of different merchandise. So what I'm trying to do, I reached out because I'm uh, the contact person for the DIA committee. We're going to do a logo for that. And I'm trying to look at some, not the standard logos, almost if some people have seen like the DEF CON ones we did years ago, some were colored, some were pop, some different things. I'm willing to do merchandise for projects, but all logos have to have the word OWASP on it somewhere or the WASP. I can't just, you know, some of the previous ones don't have OWASP on it. So I will put it on Zazzle and people can purchase it. And people, when you go on Zazzle, if you're interested in purchasing something, they always have a discount code. So look for the discount code. They always have one. But anyone who's interested and wants to see something on merchandise, just email me, give me some ideas. If you have a logo, send it to me. Or we're going to start in January uh, doing some new logos. So, you know, some fun, you know, maybe short term or different things. I'm asking them to come up with a standard chapter logo. And so Lisa did one with a globe, which was pretty cool. So we're going to work around that. But any suggestions, anything, you know, general for projects, Harold's fiddling around with some stuff. I'm all ears. Just email me and we can have a ton of different things up. Excellent. Um, we're also looking in the operating plan for next year to actually address um, the very heavily requested uh, chapter swag. Uh, you don't need to hand out swag to get people to come to your meetings. Um, what we want to do is actually come up with some guidelines and the best way uh, with the chapter committee on addressing the desired need for uh, um, merchandise. Now, it doesn't make sense to give everyone free hoodies, um, but it does make sense to give away free stickers and um, I'm flyers. Trying, and yeah, pens. things. We're just trying to figure it out. So if you're interested in helping, how do we do this? Please come to the chapter committee meetings because I think that's probably the best place to discuss it. And also, if you have any suggestions for types of merchandise that we can sell that you think would be a good seller for OWAS, um, reach out to me and we can come up with some things. Andrew, do you want to talk in this? I don't can't answer the questions about books for lean, uh, putting, you know, like the projects that, that people put books up or selling. Yeah. So. Um, if you're a, a project leader who's doing documentation like the ASVS, the top 10 and others, um, we have Lean Pub available to us. We're trying to do a test run uh, at the moment. If it, It's really interesting. I tried putting up the ASVS 403, um, but it's really pernickety about image formats. So we might need some assistance with someone who's got a bit more time than myself uh, in how do we generate the images correctly to get it published through LeanPub. Uh, so for Kevin, Kevin's asked, speaking of merchandise, how about stickers that say, oh, it's a lifetime member? We actually have a ton. Let me just try to get it up there. Of yeah, these, yeah, pin. these pins. Um, the problem is they're here with me. And I got myself some padded envelopes because the United States Postal Service will not take pins in a standard envelope. Really? Yep. Too yeah. soft? So, I will find out. That's a really good thing about a lifetime sticker. Hmm. I would, you know, Kelly used to have one, I think. I have to see. I know she had a member sticker. I can't remember if she had a lifetime. 
Mm. Yeah, we definitely need to do something. Mm. Um, okay, uh, Brian Myers. Um, Brian, did you want to come on audio if you want to just ra raise your hand or do you want to just let me answer? Or shall we answer? Yep, good. Um, the event team, can you please promote Brian? On the event teams, has their hand raised too. That. <laughs> Yay. So uh, if you can unmute, that'd be awesome. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Yeah. I didn't realize I needed to become a panelist in order to, to, to do this. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm with the Portland chapter, and um, we're putting we're cooperating with some other chapters to put on a, um, a, a an AppSec conference for the Pacific Northwest. We did a first round of that in June, um, and uh, I'm uh, there are people on the con on the committees who know a lot more about it than I do. So it's uh, you're not my only lifeline here. But as long as I had your attention, I thought I would ask, what should I know if I'm planning an OWASP event? Where should I look? Is there a, an events? committee and events project guide, uh, obviously expenses policy. I, I, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for the excellent segue. We just renewed our events policy. There is an events town hall on uh, November 30 that I think you and your team should definitely uh, come. There's actually in three different time zones. Um, we need to explain what the new events policy does. One of the things it does is that event leaders are leaders in their own right. You don't have to be a chapter leader. You don't have to be a project leader. Um, the other part of it is that it clearly explains that the budgeting process. Now, we as a foundation need to come up with some better budgeting tools um, because we get all sorts of interesting budgets, some of which are very, very rubbery. Um, and one of the things about the new expense policy is you can have a, a, a regional event that literally makes no money. You can make one cent and we'll approve it, but you need to have a budget to prove that you'll make one cent. Um, the, the reason for this is we a very limited budget for the next couple of years. Um, we're doing better than we expected now, but not so much that I'm gonna un unleash the taps. So our expenses policy is along the lines of, if you had it written down in your budget, you can expense it. Um, but fundamentally, the other parts of the new expense policy is we've got revised trainer splits. It's much fairer to the, both the um, trainer, but also the event organizers. So if you're trying to do something along the lines of uh, fundraise for your local chapter, you can actually, um, uh, you'll, you'll be better off is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, the second part of that is, is that it talks about the ways that you can use that money. So Part of the problem with the IRS is we need to move money into our mission. It can't just sit in our bank account. And previously, we would have probably failed an IRS compliance audit, not a financial audit. We keep on passing those with flying colours. What we uh, weren't good at was spending our money on mission. So it, the events policy is now aligned with that. So the event organisers get to choose how the money is spent. Uh, but what won't happen is the money sticking around. So if you're interested before the town hall, please go and read the events policy. Um, the events team, uh, Kelly and Lauren, are extraordinarily busy today and tomorrow, and they've got a training session next week. So please give them a little bit of leeway to answer any questions. But if you do have any questions, they're the right people to um, ask. Lastly, we are interested in having an events committee. It's just that when I've asked for participation before, no one stepped up. So if your team is actually interested, we just need three OWASP members to establish a committee, uh, put a charter up, and then we can take it to the board. I would love to see an events committee because we have so many tremendous events all around the world. And I do believe that um, it would be ideal to have events represented with their own committee. Oh, I think we got Harold. Hello, Mr. Harold. Okay. So Brian, I hope that answered your question. Um, but if it doesn't, please do come to the events town hall on November 30. It'll be held at three different time zones. 
so that we cover all of the major places around the world. The only sort of, if you're in the Marianas, probably not so much, but it, it should work for everyone. Okay. Um, I'm just looking. Oh, there's one new message. Yep, thank you, Brian. Okay. Um, so a new message. We are just about out of time. Okay, that's fine. Um, so the last part is, yes, we have done a lot of reform of a lot of policies this last 18 months uh, to centre our activities around the community. And I want to see that continue. We have a few policies which haven't been looked at yet, but we will do them next year. I want to make sure that our policies are fresh, relevant and community focused. So if you are interested in doing that, please do uh, work with us when we uh, post to the leaders list for feedback and comments. Uh, we want your feedback and comments. It's not us telling you how the community is going to be running. We are here for the community. So with that, um, I would just wanted to introduce you to Harold. If you have not met Harold before, Harold is our uh, Director of Projects and Technology. Um, he basically is the person, if something goes wrong and it's on fire, he tries to put the fire out. <laughs> but he's primarily... Heck he's it. Heck he's it. <laughs> but his primary job is to assist project leaders. So as a project leader, if you're on this call, please any sort of project-related questions, log them through the contact.os.org, but uh, Harold will help you with it. Okay. Any last questions? Okay. I, I will close that at the end of the day, we have committees for everything but events. Um, please, if you're a chapter leader, do try to attend uh, some of the chapter committee event um, uh, meetings. Same with projects, same with um, the compliance committee, the uh, outreach, the DIA committee, um, and the education and um, training committee. They all need help in different ways. Um, OWAS is nothing without you guys. The other thing is with the uh, chapter committee, they are looking for a new body to uh, become an officer on or around the beginning of next year. If you are interested in stepping up and uh, getting onto a committee, it's a really good way to learn um, how the sausage is made inside the foundation, if you like, um, and you can assist the board in your chosen area. Um, so um, talk to Sam. Sam is the lead of that committee. He's on this call. Um, if you want to learn more about what it actually involves, pretty much you come to a meeting once a month do some work between the meetings and uh, try to encourage people to hold more active and greater and more vibrant meetings. Um, Andrew, I yep. do have a, one quick last question. Since we've ran the last two, um, you know, global AppSex virtually, yep. are we considering when the next time when we start like meeting, you know, in person, to mm -hmm. also hold a virtual component along with it so that yeah. the people who can't like afford to like say fly from Europe or whatever still can participate. Yeah, our plan is because we're expecting COVID to still be around as an endemic issue. For some time, we will have um, a hybrid approach to our global events. Um, I don't think, I don't know that we will have hybrid uh, speakers uh, that is up to the events team. Right. I, well, yeah, but I meant the the participation. I think we could yep. draw in extra people. I mean, I know just like for some people, it's cost prohibitive, like to fly from Europe or, you know, Asia or wherever to the United States if they want to participate. Yep. So. So just very briefly, we're actually holding in-person events in Dublin and San Francisco next year. And it is a really good point. Um, about hybrid attendance. Some people can't travel because they don't meet the requirements of um, the US government or the EU uh, to enter. And we don't want to stop them participating just because um, right. of whatever reason. But also, yeah, absolutely part of our job is to make sure everyone can afford uh, our events. So um, I think that's a really good point. I'll bring it up with Kelly and hopefully she can touch on it at the um, events town hall. Okay, excellent. Thanks.